It's been a little over a year since I started on the carnivore diet. I cannot believe time flew by so quickly and there have been so many different changes into my health and that's what we will be discussing in today's video. Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, my name is Sylvia and I'm a big city mom and that's because I live, work and raise my family in New York City. I am also super passionate about health, diet, lifestyle, nutrition. And a year ago, I was able to reverse my autoimmunity, rheumatoid arthritis, through diet, lifestyle, and nutrition. I was so blown away with the results that it finally pushed me to start my blog, bigcitymom.com, and this channel. So if you are on this journey yourself, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and let's get started with today's video. Carnivore diet should be the official treatment for autoimmunity. I cannot tell you enough how surprised I was that it only took 10 days for my rheumatoid arthritis to start going away. My pain in uh, toes was gone, in my feet, in ankles and in my left knee. And that was bothering me for years. I wasn't able to squat, jump, stand on my uh, toes or do any kind of running. I was in constant pains and some days were so bad that I would limp and people would notice. So just in 10 days of carnivore diet and I was able to start squatting, jumping, running, doing yoga routines and standing on my toes. I cannot tell you how happy I was because I love to exercise and I had to find all kinds of different ways to continue exercising while dealing with rheumatoid arthritis. Till this day, I am still amazed how quickly my body started to heal when I removed the foods that were aggravating my leaky gut and added foods that heal the leaky gut. By the way, I am convinced that the root of all autoimmune diseases is the leaky gut. Uh, my test clearly indicates that I had a lot of problems with my leaky gut. And the moment I started addressing the leaky gut issues, is when I started to heal. All right, another great thing about the carnivore diet, it is a lot easier to maintain the weight. So post baby and as you progress through life, which is a fancy way of saying getting older, it is not as easy to lose and maintain desired weight. So I was able to get to my pre-pregnancy weight. However, I would have to be laser focused on my diet and exercise to stay there. And the moment I took the foot off the gas, I would gain the three to four pounds right back and I wasn't happy about it at all. And so with carnivore diet, that problem went away. Just very easy to maintain the baseline weight. So I don't have to worry as much of exercising and be all focused on the right amount of food at the right time. That's just, that problem just goes away. Oh my God, you can take exercise to the whole another level. I've been exercising most of my life and my typical routine would be that I get up in the morning, go exercising, and this usually be a high intensity interval training, some weights, but I would be really tired after the exercise. So on the weekend, I would have to take a nap, but during the work week, I would have to have some extra coffee to get through the day because I really needed that rest after the exercise. Well, with carnivore diet, that went away. There's one more thing. Um, I hate running, but with the lockdowns and with the closures of my gym, I had no choice that if I wanted to exercise, I started to run along the East River. And I hated running and I still don't like it, but I have now enough strength and stamina to pull through two to three miles with no big deal. Well, this is a very painful realization, but food cravings and food addictions are super real and they are painful when you try to get rid of them. Oh my God, did I suffer quitting coffee, carbohydrates, dairy, it was crazy. First two weeks was an absolute torture, but the good news is, it takes about two to three weeks and the, all those cravings just drop at once. My advice to you would be if you are addicted to like, let's say tea, coffee, dairy, and carbohydrates, do it in phases because to go through it all at once, having all kinds of cravings and not being able to eat your favorite foods while suffering, eh, that's a tough one. But yeah, with carnivore diet, you are learning that food addictions are real, carbohydrates, sugar, dairy, these are really addictive foods. And this is a yet another painful lesson I got from being on the carnivore diet and that is there isn't any good substitutes for sugar. Even if you go with stevia 
or monk fruit or honey. If every of your drinks have one of those sweeteners in them, you are still addicted to sugar. And it's probably even worse with the stevia uh, or monk fruit or any other artificial sweetener because your brain still gets stimulated. You still get that dopamine hit from the sweet sensation and your brain will uh, send the information to your pancreas to release uh, insulin. What is happening though, you have all that extra insulin but not enough glucose to pull it out of your blood. And if you do it on a regular basis, five times a day with every of your drink or desserts, this cannot be healthy long term. And stevia actually has been studied and it was concluded that consistent consumption of stevia will result with changes to your gut microbiome. Now I am convinced that all problems with my autoimmunity resulted from the leaky gut and dysfunctional gut microbiome. So they weren't able to tell whether these changes uh, were positive uh, or negative in those studies, but they were sure that stevia changes the gut microbiome. Now, if you are dealing with leaky gut issues or immunity, why even try to introduce another unknown variable? Just don't use stevia or any other of the sweeteners. Okay, and I have one more point about sugar to make and I am moving on and that is it is really worth examining why you are addicted to sugar. In my case, it was boredom, especially at work. I would literally sweeten up my day when the work was monotonous and the day was getting long or when I had a really stressful day and I was overwhelmed and that was a way of soothing myself was to have something sweet. And being on a carnivore diet, I had to face that conditioning and get rid of it. And I think it is worth doing for everybody. And this is a yet another great change that happens with the carnivore diet and that is my teeth improved in two ways. First was the color of them. They got a lot whiter and I didn't change my teeth cleaning routine at all. So I think it had to do with uh, stopping to drink tea and coffee. And also, I don't have any more cavities. And let me tell you this. Prior to cutting out of all carbohydrates out of my diet, I had a new root canal put in every year, total of nine root canals, all of which got infected. I had bleeding gums, I had additional cavities, which thankfully didn't require the root canals, and I had terrible bleeding gums when I was pregnant. And with a carnivore diet, and I would say mostly if you get rid of the car uh, carbohydrates, if you even go low carb, your teeth will improve significantly. And ever since I'm on the carnivore diet, I did not have any new cavity. And I am grateful for that. I discovered being on a carnivore diet that tea was really bad for my autoimmunity. And I didn't believe that tea could have anything to do with autoimmunity. In fact, the only reason I gave up on tea was because the Paleo Medicina diet protocol required it. I was like, okay, I'm gonna do it religiously because I wanna succeed on this diet. But I was thinking still that tea uh, was a health drink. And prior to going on the paleo ketogenic diet, I would drink eight to 10 teas a day. I am not exaggerating. I was convinced that tea, especially I drink it uh, without sugar, was a health drink. Well, boy, was I wrong. So a few months after I reversed my rheumatoid arthritis, I decided to bring back tea. It was the usual black tea with lemon. Within a few hours, my whole body started to itch and tingle and I was like, oh my goodness, what is happening? I've been drinking tea since I was a toddler, just as if it was water. And yeah, this was a big discovery. I never thought tea had anything to do with autoimmunity and yet it did. It definitely triggered my autoimmune responses. Perhaps it's not true for everybody, but it was for me. On the other hand, coffee doesn't give me autoimmune problems. And I was also surprised by that because I was so terribly addicted to coffee and I thought that I will die before I will be able to quit it but within three to four weeks I was able to make the transition out of coffee addiction. God, thank God for that and just for the pain that I went through quitting coffee I am never going back. But what happened was I reaped so many different benefits so I didn't know that coffee was actually causing headaches and muscle pain right here in the neck area. I would have pretty much regular headaches and regular muscle aches right here and I was attributing it to stress. Meanwhile, it was all related to my coffee consumption. 
And the moment I stopped drinking coffee, headaches, migraine type headaches, and those pains in my ne neck area just went away and never came back. And when I brought uh, back coffee and I would have like very weak coffee or decaf during my water fast, because co coffee, even if it's decaffeinated, will suppress your hunger, no autoimmune response. So from time to time, on occasion, I'll have some decaf, black decaf, nothing in it, and no autoimmune response. And I was thinking that it was actually coffee that was making my autoimmunity worse. All right, so these are my all benefits and changes that happened to me while being one year on the carnivore diet. The sole purpose of getting on the carnivore diet was to reverse a rheumatoid arthritis. Everything else is an added benefit and boy do I love it. I am probably the most surprised by the fact that I don't need to nap or drink coffee after I exercise and also I am able to run two three miles without being miserable and feeling like I'm about to die. <laughs> All right, guys, this will do it for this week's video. I will uh, link some relevant information in the description box. Also, I will uh, link some uh, related videos. If you haven't yet, subscribe, like, share, comment, and I will see you in my next video. Bye.